and I was looking up on the internet like cheerleading tips and things like that and from then just continually browsing the internet around that time I had gotten my own personal laptop um, I started to look out and find other websites to satisfy my lustful craving and desire that I knew was wrong because you know I would erase my history so that my parents wouldn't find out. Like, I knew what I was doing. Hey everybody, my name is Caroline Roberts. Today, I want to talk about um, part of my testimony, something that I struggled with during my time of being single, and that is lust. Now, I know a lot of women always ask me, like, how were you able to do it? How were you able to, um, you know, go through your battle with lust and really pursue a lifestyle of purity before God? So if you guys don't know my testimony or you've never heard, uh, read any of my books or heard me share it, um, I dealt with lesbianism at an early age as well as an addiction to pornography my whole life i was basically surrounded by women i was raised by a single mom um you know i have all sisters later down the road like i think probably in high school or college i ended up having a brother but i didn't live with him it was um you know from my dad's side so just growing up just being surrounded by women and the love of women and not really knowing before christ how it was to be loved by a man um i feel like i kind of just gravitated to that i know people will tell me like when i share my testimony you know you were just a little girl like don't feel bad about it but i feel like even at that time there was some sort of conviction um that i had or just something didn't feel right about what i was doing and that's why i wasn't out there or I wasn't verbal or I wasn't bold about my interactions with um, the girls back then it was very secretive um, you know this is something that um, I held from my family from my mom because I didn't want anyone to be ashamed of me and even at a young age even though I didn't understand the concept of sinning against the God I had a feeling that I wasn't doing something right so that is kind of how my whole um, you know, introduction to lesbianism and thoughts with other women, like I said, even though I didn't act upon a lot of things, in my head, I had these impure thoughts that tainted my heart about women. And in the Bible, it says that even if you look lustfully at a woman, that you've already committed adultery in your heart. So, you know, sinning isn't just acting upon something. What is the intention of your heart saying? What are your thoughts saying? What are you thinking about? Because God doesn't just see what we act upon or what we do within our flesh. He hears our thoughts. He sees our heart. He sees our intentions. And, you know, eventually I had to learn that purity wasn't just the fact that, you know, I didn't have a official girlfriend purity was am i honoring god with my life truly in my heart in my mind behind closed doors when nobody sees me not just how i look to others in the forefront and i really had to learn that this issue of lust had to be dealt with like in here um it was an issue that I had to win the battle over and over and over again behind closed doors. And it couldn't be something that I was doing for the approval of the church. It couldn't be do something that I was doing for the approval of men. My desire to be pure before God and present my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him, was something that I really, really, really had to desire for myself. Now, I know that everyone's testimony is different, but I'm saying for me, the thing that got me through is that I really had to des desire to be set free from it because I believe that God was better, God was more, that all these things I was doing would never be able to satisfy me, would never be good enough 
for me. During my middle school years, um, I was getting ready for tryouts for my middle school cheerleading team and I was looking up on the internet like cheerleading tips and things like that. And from then, just continually browsing the internet around that time, I had gotten my own personal laptop. Um, I started to look out and find other websites to satisfy my lustful craving and desire. You know, I just had this this struggle and this battle that I knew was wrong because, you know, I would erase my history so that my parents wouldn't find out. Like, I knew what I was doing. I used to go to church, but I didn't really have a relationship with the Lord. But I've heard the gospel, but I just never really let it sink in. So anyways, um, I was in this verbally abusive relationship and it was so hard to get out of that relationship because the guy would threaten to commit suicide if I left him and just made all these threats that made it hard for me mentally um, like to get out of the relationship with him. So one night I was just praying and I was like, God, you know, I've never built a relationship with you. I never really got to know you. I know I go to church and stuff, but if you break off this relationship with this guy, I promise that I will get to know you. And then the Lord broke off this relationship that I had with this guy. The next day he texted me and he's like, hey, I had a dream that we broke up. And I was like, oh wow, maybe that's a sign or something. And he's like, yeah, maybe we just, you know, should part ways, like this is it. And from that day we broke up and it was just crazy because it happened so peacefully and I knew it was God. And I was like, okay, you know, God took his side of the bargain or whatever. So now it's my turn to actually build a relationship with him. So around that time, I got plugged into um, a Bible teaching church. I left the old church that um, I used to go to with my mom. Um, I went to church by myself around this time. I believe I was 14. Um, I just got my permit. I drove to church by myself. Like I didn't have anyone go go with me like I wanted this relationship with God so bad like I didn't have anyone to force me to pull me I wanted him more than I wanted my pain than I wanted my rejection than I wanted my hurt than I wanted to be tied in bondage to these lustful desires so you know around that same time where I joined that church I really started reading in the word getting into the Bible and I really felt God tugging at my heart about these hidden issues, these secrets that I've kept in all of my childhood and all my, all my life. So this is when I started going through my process of deliverance. At first it wasn't easy. Some months would go by and I would go back on a pornographic website. But eventually, honestly, I can say like, I was set free because the Lord has shown me and give me strategies to continue to fight this fight, even in my marriage, to continue to remain pure. So some of the things that I did is I had to give myself a time where I'm just not going to be on the computer. I'm just not going to be you know, online. If my mom is asleep, if my parents are asleep, then okay, we got to close the computer. I need to be asleep too. Um, I started to guard my heart strongly. So for example, um, I stopped, which it got better over time, but I stopped li listening to really, really secular music, but I still listened to R&B at the time, but at least it was a step. Right now, don't come at me with R&B or nothing like that, unless it's Lauryn Hill, because that's my girl, right? But don't come at me with no Rihanna. Like, it is praise and worship all day. Even in my marriage now, I don't watch, I barely watch PG-13 movies. They make me uncomfortable. I'm not trying to see anybody else kiss, because I know what my struggle was back then, and I'm not trying to go back. Like. I guard my heart. In the Bible it says in Proverbs 4.23 that above all, all else, guard your heart from everything you do flows from it. So when you guard your heart, you put a protective barrier around it. So when God you know, removes everything that was unclean from within your heart and he renews a right heart and a new spirit within you, now you guard it and your heart is pure so you get to have pure actions that 
that flow from it. But if God removes these things or the uncleanliness from your heart and he purifies you, but you're not guarding your heart and it's just a wide open door, and then you're letting all these seeds be planted into your heart with the music you listen to, with the things you watch, and with all that stuff, then now your heart is going back to being impure. You know, you don't have a pure heart anymore and then your actions that flow from it are gonna be actions to gratify your own flesh. It's not gonna be pure actions. To help me in this time, I took the verses like this, I took a lot of Bible verses, which I'll put some Bible verses down below, and I would write out index cards and I would just remind myself when I was tempted, for example, cast down vain imaginations and anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Like that was my scripture and it's still my scripture because you cannot avoid the temptation sometimes because it'll come knocking at the door. You cannot avoid that. The enemy is still gonna send temptation, but you are responsible for how you respond to that. You have to take authority immediately and cast down that vain imagination. Turn off that TV show. Walk out the room even if you look crazy, even if you wasted your money. If I go to a movie and they're here like, inappropriate having whatever doing whatever they want to do I will walk out of the movie I don't care how much I paid for the movie like that's how serious you have to be and even like with the people around you you have to be honest I had to explain to my husband because he can watch some things and though there are some things that he has peace about watching and I'm not gonna sit here and nag him but I say hey babe you know my struggle can you go outside and watch this can you put in your headphones you know you do your thing, but I'm not trying to listen to that and I'm not trying to watch that. And he just understands and he respects that. So, you know, if you are in this season and if you have friends and hopefully they're godly friends, so be careful who you surround yourself with or even family members. You know, we got some family members that you're gonna be around some family parties. They have their own music, they have their own stuff. Just be real, hey. I don't listen to this stuff. I desired God more and over time it became easier and easier. The more you resist the devil, like the Bible says, he shall flee. I just continued resisting him. It's been years since I've been doing this walk and every time I just resist him, resist him, resist him, resist him, resist him, resist him. And it became easier and easier. God always provides a way of escape. So you don't have to feel in bondage to your past and into your sin and into your lust. You have to remember. When you're in that moment, you have to say, God has provided a way of escape. God has provided a way of escape. So show me, Lord, what is the way of escape right now? Does it mean I can walk away? Does it mean I have some worship music that I can put on? Does it mean I need to go spend some time in my word? What is that way of escape? Holy Spirit, reveal it to me so I can go for it. A lot of you are trying to do this in your own flesh. I wasn't able to fight this battle with lust until I really started building a relationship with the Lord, until I got saved and I really had the power of the Holy Spirit working within me, especially baptism of the Holy Spirit, the power that comes out of that, like being edified through and in the Holy Spirit will allow you to walk out because he'll show you what's ahead. The Holy Spirit will say, hey, no, don't go to that party. Hey, no, don't go over to that person's house. Mm -mm. No, don't let him come over the house. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I don't think you should go on a date with this person. No, 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 no. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you and show you the things that are to come, then you're just going to keep falling into a trap, falling into a trap, falling into a trap. I was a virgin, uh, which like I said, I didn't have intercourse before I got married. So I was a virgin when I got married, but a lot of us put so much emphasis on our virginity and not so much on our purity and you could be a pretty dirty virgin. I thought I was so uppity and so great and so good because yeah, I'm a virgin, yeah, I'm a virgin. But behind closed doors, I was having thoughts of doing things with women. I was trying to push the envelope but not go all the way. And if you have had sex, that doesn't make you damaged goods. God has a way of restoring you um, to purity. Like anything is possible to the Lord. He can restore you to purity. Um, of course, you're not gonna physically be a virgin anymore, but sometimes we really need to focus more on what's going on on the inside than what's going on on the outside. 
and we need to focus more on if we're pleasing God with our lives versus how we're appearing as a goody two shoes or as a good girl before other men. It's really a posture of heart, knowing that in every season, no matter if I'm single, no matter if I'm married, I really want to honor God with my heart. I really want to do his will and I want to bring him glory out of my relationships, out of my singleness, in and out of every season. I really hope that this video blessed you. I love you all. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.